Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, over the next 20 minutes, I'm excited to take you across um, one classic example of the application of computer vision um, within the insurance domain. As you can imagine, there are several different applications wherein the latest uh, methodologies in NLP and computer visions play a big role within different workflows used in insurance. I'm going to use one of these as an example to show you the richness of uh, you know, both the problems and the solution space that we have and are uh, exploring. So the topic for today is going to be uh, CV models to look at vehicle damage evaluation. Um, before I begin, uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Ravinath Kaushik. I'm the director for data science acceleration at Liberty Mutual uh, Global Risk Solutions. Um, where my primary focus is on extending, you know, the, the frontiers of AI and ML to bring in different applications that we can embrace for different lines of business uh, within the insurance sector. Um, prior to being at Liberty, I spent about a decade in the energy industry in R&D, engineering, and commercialization, mainly with a big chunk of my time spent in R&D and model build. Um, a lot of work on uh, images and image-related work. Prior to that, my PhD was in physics, and I did a lot of work on MRI systems um, and the way in which we image different, you know, um, for different medical applications. So that's kind of my background. And, and over the last two years at Liberty, I've been focusing on, you know, things important for uh, from an insurance perspective. So. Today, at a very high level, we will, you know, kind of take up one example, which I believe is going to be acting as an, uh, a kind of an example for the different kinds of problems we come across within the sector. We look at the role of computer vision from this perspective, the problem that I mentioned of vehicle damage, and walk through the, the lifetime, if you may, of getting from the data the challenges in the data that we typically encounter uh, to the state of art models in computer vision. There's been quite a lot of uh, growth within this industry over the last couple of years, which has really democratized the use of AI and ML model build with these pre-trained models for applications such as this. And then how, you know, CV is not just a, a separate entity, but combining it together with, you know, classic tabular data or natural language processing, bringing in embeddings from text and combining it with images to put out the kind of answers that we want to put out, enhancing the final accuracies of where we want to be. So uh, I will end, end with a summary of uh, where we are in this process. But stepping back as a, you know, from an insurance perspective, as an example, um, I think most of us would be familiar with this. Why is vehicle damage assessment important? And what is the workflow? What are the timelines, right? So one gets into, into an accident. Um, there is a crash. One needs to identify the, the liable party and apply for the insurance through collision damage assessment. And this is where the insurance company's role comes into picture, right? And the primary purpose of this assessment is to evaluate what's the repair work that is required to bring this vehicle back to its normal driving state, and what would it cost for the reimbursement, right? So that kind of evaluation is the key aspect that adjusters within the insurance realm deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's an extremely manual task, takes a lot of time, because one has to look through all the photos and details of a particular crash, understand what has really happened, and try to then determine whether it should be fixed, replaced, or you know what the status is. Now, this is where, as we all know and can expect, uh, there is a huge role for AI and ML. This whole process, as we know, can be you know uh, speeded up, done more accurately, and also in an automated way, still having human in the loop, but aiding the process in this industry uh, with respect to you know, making the life uh, easier, more accurate for the end result product that comes out, uh, and so on and so forth, by embracing computer vision and natural language processing techniques. Um, so broadly, for this particular use case, I'll just run through as an example of all the way going in from the ingestion of the data, the challenges that we generally see from the data side going into what are the different kind of components that we look at for making something like this come out to be real, right? Uh, detect the objects that we have to see, which in this case is going to be uh, vehicle-related, 
uh, determine what the exact features are, which are going to be a combination of different parts, different damages, and try to make an evaluation of how much these have been actually damaged in this process and uh, make sure that the assessment goes through in an accurate and automated fashion using a predictive model right at the end. And this model, of course, can be a combination together with the photos that are you know, extracted out at this ingestion phase, but also together with other kinds of information that you typically have in use cases such as these. So that's kind of the, the high level picture of um, how we are structuring and going through this particular uh, example. Um, we just had a panel right before lunch on data quality. And for use cases such as this uh, and similar ones, obviously everything starts and I wouldn't say ends with the data, but starts and you know stays with the data for quite a bit of time. Uh, image quality, uh, image quantity, image diversity. Uh, these are you know top three different things you want. You know at the basic level you are you are always worried about things like you know I have some examples of blurry images, things which are too dark and you do not want to put them through your pipeline, or things with the, which have some in interference. Like I show you some photos with uh, shadows on them. You always have solutions like you know filtering out using uh, the Laplace transformation, looking for changes pixel to pixel. You know as you blur your images, you can look for peaks and chop out ones that you believe are very blurry or very dark. Um, and the same case with ones which have too much interference from shadows and other kinds of external um, uh, impacts. But data challenges don't start and stop at this simple level. Obviously, the next level is could we get enough of these examples so that you are able to label them and you're able to label them to get enough of it to be able to be predictive in the process? Um, are you getting a wide, diverse, let's say, a variety of different vehicles so that you have uh, a representative sample without any bias so that you're you know, doing equally well with different classes of vehicles, if you may, right? So all these different aspects of labeling data diversity and bias is, I would say, kind of a huge chunk of the time that we spend on prepping up for these computer vision applications. Um, so that's one side of uh, uh, the things. The other, of course, is the quantity, right? I mean, one wants to have enough quantity of data to be able to build these models. There are obviously solutions that one can look out to, for example, vendor data. One could also go to, there are so many vendors out there who are you know, able to provide for different use cases um, uh, pre-cleaned uh, data that one could use for their initial models that one could first train on and transfer learn to whatever uh, different applications that you have. So that is one important aspect of uh, uh, our pipeline. Uh, transfer learning, of course, is, is, is key in that sense. And with the, with the large number of pre-trained models that are coming out in the different realms, this is here to stay and grow in, in the way in which we structure solutions for use cases such as this. The other, of course, is the ability to be able to label these data so that we have a clear set of uh, uh, data that we can then train on to apply. Um, active learning obviously plays uh, a big role in this, which is uh, a great enabler for us to be able to, you know, kind of label the next best data that is available within our system, so that we end up with a, uh, you know, higher level of accuracy using a, a much smaller amount of data, if you may, among everything that we have to start training and then. Um, testing out these different approaches. So data quality and quantity issues, and then moving beyond it, one comes to the, the world of model build, right? And this is where there has been quite a lot of uh, progress over the last few years in the ability to have quite a number of these pre-trained models that enable us to take them off the shelf and be able to use them to a reasonable extent, you might have to retrain a few of them, but to use them to a reasonable extent for different use cases um, as, you, as you may be interested in. So, I mean, broadly segregating some of the different kinds of classes of models that we were interested in in similar kinds of approaches, vehicle damage being one that I'm focusing on uh, over here, uh, obviously object detection. Um, as this use case clearly signifies one need to understand the actual vehicle 
that is being uh, damaged and being looked at and being assessed by drawing uh, bounding boxes around these vehicles as a first pre-processing step. Uh, and then one needs to think about classification. Uh, we need to understand which side of the vehicle, the orientation of the vehicle that has actually been damaged. Is it the exterior or the interior? And you know what is the impact of it? So you know you got image classification uh, problem that one needs to step uh, step through. Then you then have to think about segmentation, right? You need to think about how different parts of your vehicles have been uh, affected. Is it the door or the window or the bumper or the backside, uh, the front where the engine is? So different parts of the vehicles can be damaged to different extents. And that has a big impact on what the actual final assessment would be, right? So all these different topics are, I mean, obviously nothing um, new in specific to this use case is broadly uh, valued across different use cases and democratized because of the access of many of these pre-trained models available today. Many of these being pre-processing steps and then feature extraction steps that go into you know, the next phase of uh, determining uh, what the impact of the, the damage is. So object detection models, like I mentioned, have, have come a long way. It is the ability to detect and locate the object of interest. In this particular uh, embodiment, we're talking about the, the vehicle damage over here. And broadly, as is reasonably well known, we have the one stage and two stage models, wherein you have the give and take between uh, speed, where you want to do inference very quickly. Sometimes, you know, at the edge, it has to be done super fast so that the inference feeds into your cycle, which makes immediate decisioning necessary for that use case. Or two-stage methods wherein, you know, you can take a little bit more time, but accuracy is your, your main uh, goal over here. And there you have, you know, classic uh, YOLOs and retina nets for the one-stage methods. You have RCNN uh, and different embodiments of RCNN for um, the two-stage methods. Um, for our use case that I, I was, uh, you know, kind of discussing today, the impact of object detection is is discussed in quite a number of talks in this, even in this conference too, right? I mean, whether it is for self-driving cars or the ability to identify different vehicles, with the metric being used as your intersection um, over the union to finally bound boxes to identify the vehicle of interest which has been damaged, which will then be passed through your pipeline. And one needs to then also figure out, you know, I mean, you can have uh, different modalities of 2D versus 3D detection to help you based on the, the, the details that you need in your use case and the level of details that you need for your inference uh, as you work through it. So um, beyond, you know, detecting the object, then you have to go in and look at the finer details of the object. And you might have to classify the object uh, based on multiple criteria. I show you some examples over here, but you can imagine how many ever different classification criteria you might need to use. Uh, you might need to understand whether it is the interior or the exterior, because you may not want to run something of an interior picture through a detector the same way as you might want to run an exterior detector uh, or the front or the rear of the car or literally the orientation uh, over 360 degrees which has a big role to play in reflecting the impact of what a damage could uh, finally result in in terms of repair costs if you may. So that's the, the classification part and then of course you have image segmentation uh, this again is a component of computer vision which has seen you know super rapid uh, growth over the last few years. The ability to segment you know these pictures wherein each pixel is then mapped to a particular object. So you can do it in the classic way with semantic segmentation, wherein you identify you know different um, uh, objects of the same class, like for example different people or different cars in a picture, or you could go deeper and look for instance segmentation, wherein you might want to separate out within the same class the different unique objects, like car one versus car two, which might be important in applications such as ours, wherein you, know, you have a multi-car collision, right? So multiple of these segmentation models which have become uh, you know, literally off the shelf today can be embraced for applications to try and understand the object of interest, the orientation and the different classifications of the object of interest, and to go beyond it and segment the object of interest 
into different components, like I mentioned, the uh, the bumper or the the door or the you know the hood and so on and so forth, right? And um, one can initially try and identify what these different damaged uh, or different parts are, and take it even further to see what is the amount of damage that is there and classify it to different sections and look at the overlap between the damage areas and the actual part to see that um, which component of your vehicle has actually been damaged to what degree. At the end of the day, if you sit back and think about what an adjuster would be thinking through, this is how it would you know, be in the mind of a person, right? So this kind of follows the, the intuitive thinking of the use case of evaluating vehicle damage using off-the-shelf components, and this has become, you know, um, reasonably democratized using these approaches in the, in the recent times. Um, so going beyond this is the final step of putting all your understandings together and coming up with the final, um, you know, the, the final statement of what actually is the repair cost, which is the one number that is of interest to the uh, people trying to run through the application. And here is where um, I want to stress on the fact that um, we, we focus quite a bit on the computer vision part of this because of, you know, the session was a computer vision session, right? But sources of data tend to come from all different uh, uh, streams, right? You have structured variables and tabular data which, uh, you know, cover some of the vital aspects that you would want to know to make this prediction, especially, for example, let's say prior to damage, you want to understand what the car is, right? A Lamborghini versus a, a Civic start at a very different point in terms of what their values are, um, you know? So things like that. And then you have all these photos, which with many of these models, pre-trained and then fine-tuned, let's say, give you an idea of what actually happened, what the damage was, how much was it, um, you know, at which part of the vehicle, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, one can also collect information from the people involved, let's say, in this application in the crash, but in other applications, there's always some text-related information that is available that can provide you with you know, a little bit more information or different information, uh, complementing what you have from your tabular data and your computer vision uh, components. So one could take embeddings of these text and combine it with the computer vision features and the structured data to build something more, um, say, grander and more accurate to make the final predictions of, uh, you know, um, what what the actual um, value of this workflow is in terms of actual numbers of, of losses. So in summary, I mean, I, I've touched upon one of the use cases in this very rich uh, uh, field of insurance, wherein there is, you know, a lot of scope of different computer vision and NLP applications. Over here, we saw a classic one of vehicle damage, which is, you know, kind of becoming extremely popular across the board, using um, some of the pre-trained model components and combining them, combining the state-of-art models, which do, you know, uh, object detection, image segmentation, image classification, together with NLP where you can take the uh, embeddings, combine them with a uh, combined model at the end of it, a predictive model, which provides us with a answer that is of, of interest. So um, that's the story I had to share with you from my end over uh, on, on this topic today. Um, so I'm open for questions, discussions, um, either now or um, I'll hang around after the talk, but I think we still have about a minute. So. Any questions, thoughts, comments, uh, floor is yours.